Hey everyone, Ryan from Me Bike Escape. About a month ago, I shared that I am now an ambassador for Tannis. Now, Tannis sells the Tannis armor, which you see here, but they also sell airless tires. And there are a few reasons that I wanted to share these products from Tannis. One, I really like that they offer sidewall protection as well as up to 15 millimeters of protection at the top. And tire liners are a product I see a lot of people purchase. Now, many people purchase these if they live in areas with goat heads, but it can also help prevent pinch flats and other debris on the road. Tire liners are especially beneficial if you have an electric bike, particularly one with a rear hub motor. And that's because you have a bolt on the rear hub instead of a quick release. So if you're out on a ride and you have to change a tire, it can be quite difficult. So tire liners are definitely a solution to that. Speaking of the pain of removing a rear wheel, I actually tried to do this video a couple weeks ago and I stripped out the bolt that attaches our torque arm on our rad wagon. It definitely wouldn't have been able to remove the rear wheel while I was out on a ride, but finally got that all taken care of. So now I can put the rear one in the rad wagon. You can see here, I also have my Unero fat tire all wheel drive electric bike, and we're gonna put the Tannis tire liners in there. On the Unero, we have 26 by four inch tires, and on the 2018 Rad Power Bikes Rad Wagon, we have 26 by 2.3 inch tires, and Tannis sells a wide variety of sizes. Just note that when you purchase the tire liners, you will need to go down a tube size, and that is obviously to accommodate the size of the liners within the tire. I will have a link to the Tannis products in the description below. Those links help support e-bike escape. With that, let's flip these bikes over and take off these wheels and put the tire liners in. The first step is to flip over your bike. We opted to do so in the grass because you do want to be careful of your handlebars, mirror, LCD screen, etc. There's also a product called handlebar jacks, which can work nicely. The next step is to loosen both bolts on your rear wheel. This is typically with a 18 millimeter wrench and also you'll want to remove any torque arms that are attached as well. The next step is to pull off the rear wheel. Be sure to detach any connections with the motor. You may have to remove some zip ties as well. Next, remove all the air from your wheel. I typically use a corner of a tire lever, but you can use whatever you want to push that Schrader valve in to release the air. Next, you'll absolutely want a pair of tire levers. I'm using the ones Tana sent me, but there's tons of different brands online and they work very similar. So you should be able to get underneath the tire and then run the tire lever along the entire wheel and you'll have one side of the tire off of the rim. At this point, you should be able to remove both the tire and the tube very easily, though I did learn with the fat tire bike, I was able to leave half of the tire installed and simply remove the tube. That just made the process a little faster, so check that out later in the video. Now comes the fun part, installing the liners. Keep in mind, this is the first time that I've installed the Tannis liners, so if you have any other tips and tricks, let me know in the comments below. Basically, what you need to do is put on one side of the tire onto your rim. And then you'll want to take your Tannis liner and start working it into the tire on the side that is open. Once I had the liner installed, I did work the opposite side just to make sure that the liner was fit in there properly. The Tannis liner is really like an additional tire with the sidewall protection, so you want to make sure that it is centered with the tire as best as you can. Keep in mind, you do need to size down on tubes. When you place your order with Tannis, you can select whether you want the tubes included or not, and they do offer both Schrader and Presto valves. And then of course, you'll need a pump. Pump up the tube just enough so it takes shape so you can insert it into the Tannis tire liner. Take the tube and put it into the Tannis tire liner. I decided to start with the Schrader valve first. And you'll want to make sure you kind of pull that through. Obviously, you don't want to do any damage to the valve, but this is probably the trickiest part of this step. The reason I say to pull the Schrader valve through is due to the fact that you want to make sure enough is exposed so you can appropriately attach the pump to the Schrader valve or whatever valve you have and actually pump up the tire.
Next, I completed putting in the side of the tire liner before eventually putting the actual tire back on the rim with tire levers, which if you've done this before can be, well, fun, but you're almost done. Once your tire is in place, Tannis recommends that you massage all along the tire to make sure it is both centered and even. Everything was going great with the install until the alligators showed up, requiring us to move to the front yard to complete installation of the tire liners because no way was I going to install these things with this guy behind me. At this point, presumably your tires are pumped up and you've made sure that the tire liners are installed evenly so you can install the wheel back on the bike. Again, this process just reiterates the fact that you definitely do not want to be doing this while you're out on the road. Bolt on the rear wheel and be sure to reinstall any torque arms that you removed as well as any electrical connections that you disconnected. The process for installing tire liners in the front wheel is likely to be easier, especially if you have a quick release, unless of course you have a all-wheel drive fat tire bike like I do here. Two motors, one in each wheel, means that neither of these wheels are easily removed. That's why I'm so happy to have Tannis tire liners on my fat tire bike, so in theory I won't have to worry about anything related to the tires for some time. The install of the actual liners was easier on the fat tire electric bike. This was partially related to the fact that since these tires are so big, they are just easier to work with. There's more space to get everything together and I put these on pretty quickly. Plus I did have some experience now installing them. I did manage to install the tire liners without ever taking the tires completely off the wheel. You should plan for an hour or two per bike depending on how familiar you are with taking bikes apart, but if this doesn't sound like a Saturday afternoon project that you want to take on, I do have some good news. Tannis works with bike shops and most shops should be happy to put these in for you. And there's more good news because next month, March 2021, a partnership between Tannis and Rad Power Bikes will be official. Rad Power Bikes, of course, is the largest seller of electric bikes in North America. Tannis is also going to be getting new 20 by 4 inch armor in stock soon. This is, of course, a popular tire size on many electric bikes on the market, so good on Tannis for staying on top of things. I'm told they will be available within the next six weeks, so keep an eye out. I'll also try to share this news on social media. You can follow me everywhere at eBike Escape. The other cool thing is that in the unlikely event you do get a flat tire, you can still ride for a limited time on Tannis liners just because of how thick they are. From my perspective, if these tire liners prevent just one flat, they will have paid for themselves, especially in some of the faraway places that electric bikes can take you. It's peace of mind while you're out on a ride. All right, I hope you enjoyed this review and install of the Tannis Armor tire liners. Given I just installed these tire liners, I will be sure to keep everyone updated on my thoughts of them over time, but I think Tannis offers a great product. I love that these have sidewall protection, and I know they're going to be expanding into other tire sizes, and I especially think this is a great accessory if you own an electric bike. They are definitely going on my recommended electric bike accessories list. That will also be linked in the description below. You can also find my electric bike deals page where I share some of my favorite electric bike brands. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.